If there is no functioning ocean, there's no functioning land. If there's no blue, there's no green. Because most of the life in the ocean is under the surface, uh, it's not something that's at the forefront of our mind. But it is true that that's where life originated. And it is true that the biological and ecological processes that happen under the waves are those that truly support the planet as a whole. Theodore Roosevelt started the national park system. And uh, some people say that was his best idea because he realized that protecting some of the land is something that's in the general interest of humanity and all the animals on the earth. The level of protection in the ocean right now is currently under 4% and the level of no-take protection, which is really an area that can't be fished at all, is under 1%. On the land, those numbers are 10, 20, 30%. So we can see there's a huge difference in the amount of attention we're paying to the land and the amount of attention we're paying to the ocean. Now consider that the ocean covers 70% of the planet and that it has the majority of biodiversity and biomass. It's likely that we should pay more attention to protecting more of the ocean if we're interested in sustaining a planet that functions in our favor. A big piece of marine protection is enforcement. You can have a body in a parliament that says this piece of water is now fully protected, but if there's no enforcement in the area, then you're going to still likely have the same problems of illegal fishing and resource extraction that's happening outside of the public eye. So it's important to have a strong enforcement regimen, and that requires real resources committed on the part of governments and international organizations. So the first step, of course, is getting people galvanized around protection and getting meaningful protection put into law. And the second piece is really following through and educating people and educating businesses around these no-take zones. Just shy of 50% of the ocean is what's called the high seas, which means it's ocean that's outside of any nation's exclusive economic zone. And this area is largely unregulated and practices such as overfishing and dumping can happen with impunity on the high seas. Currently, the United Nations General Assembly is looking into providing a legal framework to protect the biodiversity of the high seas. Hope spots are parts of the ocean that deserve protection first because of their ecological importance. And so in thinking about the ocean and the services that it provides to our planet in the form of life, in the form of oxygen, regulating climate, absorbing carbon. When we wonder how much should we protect of the ocean, we really should look back and say, well, given what the ocean does for us, how much of it is worth protecting? It's likely more than the 4% or less that currently has any protection. If we can reach a level of protection such as Mission Blue's goal, which is 20% protection by 2020, then we might be talking about putting aside enough of the ocean to allow the ocean to have and regain its, its productive capacity to really support the planet. We've already done such on the land. In the United States, you know, well over 20% of the land is federal land, is protected in some way. We've learned that lesson on the land, and now it really is time for us to learn that lesson at sea. The Gulf of California is an example of a hope spot that is really showing signs of uh, reversing the ocean decline that uh, has happened over the past decades. Specifically, the marine protected area that was established in Cabo Pulmo 20 years ago has shown a massive rebounding in life. And there are vibrant schools of fishes and whale sharks and incredible life down there. And it really shows and speaks to the power of marine conservation. Mm -hmm.